Hey everyone, welcome to another video on Malagus the Twisted. As you can see, I've almost finished this model. I've been working really hard to uh, get it done for the tutorials. But in this one, we're going to focus just on the face, actually. I think the green and the face deserve their own video tutorials as they're the most difficult and arguably most important things. So we're going to do those two separately and then I'm trying to finish all the details. I'm nearly there and then we'll do a final part where I basically finish the model. And that'll be sort of less difficult but more rapid fire in terms of doing all these little things like the leather and the cloth and all these different colours. So yeah, lots of processes for the final part, but all a little bit easier than the green and the skin. I absolutely love the sculpt on this face. I mean, for me, it's the best bit. It's so cool. It's really evil looking and it's also really crisp. It was an absolute pleasure to paint. And I was really surprised how easy it was. And I think you're gonna enjoy this video because in terms of how many paints we're gonna need, it's very few. It's very few processes. So yeah, hopefully this is a simple way you can use for your armies or your display characters. You can use the same process, just take more or less time depending on how important the model is to you. So that's probably enough ramble and let's begin. You remember in the last video we did the pre-highlight, spraying white over black, and this is really important for the skin. And if you don't have an airbrush, just spray it with a plain white or a very light gray, but I really like pale base coats for skin. For this one, it's particularly important because we're gonna use some contrast paints. I'm using Gulliman Flesh, quite an obvious choice, but I'm also gonna use this shyish purple mixed in to create some darker tones. So you can see the shyish purple is very saturated. So we just need to be careful and add a little bit to the Gulliman flesh. You get this very rich, reddish, deep kind of color. And it's quite interesting and versatile, but very easy to use. So you're going to use Gulliman flesh on its own. Then you're going to add a little bit of this purple to make a slightly darker tone. And that's all we need from the contrast paints. So the Malaga sculpt has lots of detail, like the kind of splits in his skin. So I start off by just smashing some of this Gulliman flesh kind of in the recesses, really. This was my original intention, which was just to use the contrast to get in these recesses. But in the end, it managed to provide such a nice foundation that I used them a little more than I thought I would. So you can see I've just added it and it's just getting into all those uh, deep recesses. So make sure it's sitting nicely, not flooding it too much, and then let it dry. Once that first pass is dry, you can add your deeper tone, or maybe just a second tone with Gulliman Flesh, and just be really careful with it this time. So you're just trying to get the recesses as dark as you need, and that could be dark enough with just Gulliman Flesh. It's, uh, yeah, it's quite dark when it dries, but we use that purple tone as well for the cracks in the skin and some of the deeper parts. And because we want a kind of deadish, not very nice looking flesh, that little bit of purple uh, helps to add towards that. Now it's dry, you can see a little clearer the purple, especially in those recesses, and it's just very deep and dark. And what I'm doing next before we move on is just a little bit of admin helps uh, to do these base coats, I think, first of all. So I'm just putting some Sons of Horus green over the grill and the front. And then we might as well paint all the other parts, like the pipes, in black as well. It just helps see clearer and, you know, maybe helps us making a mess later after we've done these skins. So this is kind of a new thing for me, but I do like to base coat a lot of areas now. And uh, yeah, it's a bit of a pain and boring at the beginning, but yeah, I definitely like doing this way now. If you've seen my tutorials before, you know I like to get the eyes done early days, and for the white of the eye, I don't wanna use a pure white, so I'm using this pale blue color, which we're gonna use plenty in this tutorial. And now we've done the washes over the white, it's actually really easy to see where the eye is, so that's why I like to do it at this point. So those washes just help us see where to go and now we can hopefully block in this eye 
and do a good job. And if we make a mistake, we can just tidy up with the wash. But yeah, this made it tons easier. And it's a nice model actually, big eye. I painted in the white of the eye and had full intention of just doing a normal eye. But then I thought, well, this is Malaga, so twisted. He's a very kind of uh, evil character. And I think I want, you know, a little more than just a normal eye. So I've decided to go for a cataract effect. And I've never done this before. And I thought it was a good opportunity to try it, especially since Malagust's eye is, it's a little bigger than normal on one side. It's kind of open. And like I said, it was so crisp. I thought, yeah, I definitely want to try it on this model. I wouldn't do a cataract effect on a sister of battle, I don't think. They're very small, but this seemed like the right thing to try it on. So I looked at the colors uh, on Google Images, and this is the image I probably enjoyed the most. And you can see we have like a dark gray around the edge of the uh, eye. And then the center is again a grayish blue with a bit of kind of ultramarine and kind of space wolvesy colors, I guess. So my main color is going to be ultramarine from model color and I'm using dark gray as well to desaturate it basically. So we need to use ultramarine to get the tone but then we need to use dark gray and a light gray in order to desaturate and get the values we want. So you can see the kind of base coat is going to be a little bit of dark gray mixed with ultramarine and it was a bit too dark so I just added a touch of the pale blue that we used earlier. And then for the sort of center part of the eye, the lighter blue, I'll just add some more pale blue to it. And if it gets too desaturated, too gray, then just add a touch more ultramarine. So you can see here, I kind of have a second go just to see what it's like if I just mix those two together. But definitely needs a little bit of dark gray, otherwise I think it's too saturated and uh, bright. So just have a practice. It's really good to learn how to desaturate your colors. So fairly simple now when we got the color right. I mean, simple in theory, but tricky to uh, paint. So we're gonna paint the large part of the eye, trying to get it central. And uh, this is my best attempt, camera pressure. So I had to have a second go here. I was a bit ginger with the first attempt. And that looks pretty good, nice and big. If you make any mistakes, you can go back with the light gray, which is what I'm doing here. So it was a little bit big, so I'm just adjusting it. And this is why I wanna do the eyes first. And then we're gonna go ahead and paint that lighter color in the center. Sorry if the footage is a little out of focus. It's so hard to stay still, stay in focus and actually do an okay job of the eye. So we've done that now and we're just gonna do the white dot now for the shine. So just trying as good as I can. And that looks pretty good. So here, there you go, an in focus shot. And you can see what I've done. The white dot looks fairly big here on the camera, but I think in real life it helps it, you know, make it clear, you don't want it too small. Plus I'm not correcting that, <laughs> I think that'll do. And then I just kind of check against my reference, seeing if I'm happy. And yeah, I am, I'm really happy I tried that effect and I think it really suits Malagurst, so we'll take that. So with that lovely job out of the way, we can move on to painting the skin. And you only need one main skin color for this. So I'm using natural flesh, uh, you can use Cadian flesh, it's very similar as you can see or Beige Red's a really good one, and Vallejo and AK make that. They're just a little more saturated, but uh, yeah, not much in it. So just pick one of these great mid-tones, and that's the only skin color you're gonna need. And we're gonna use Pale Blue again, and this is gonna help give the kind of dead flesh look. Again, this is gonna desaturate the color, so it's gonna help. Uh, not make it too happy. <laughs> we want this to be kind of grim dark, so using relatively more desaturated colors is helpful. And you can see as I add a little bit of the pale blue, it doesn't feel like you know you're making a really blue skin, but it is a very natural kind of grayish tone. Actually, when we look at a lot of skin references, it's kind of different shades of gray really with a touch of tone in. 
And that's what I was looking for with uh, this effect. So it will get to a point where you keep adding the pale blue and it will look too grayish, too blue. So at that point, grab some white like I do here and that will help you get the extra values. Again, white will desaturate and you don't want to go anywhere near pure white, but this kind of color for your top highlight, you can see next to the white there, is going to be fantastic. So now it's a case of layering on these colors and trying to blend it in with the washes we did. The washes lay quite a nice foundation actually, and there's still a, quite a light tone on the top of the head. So what we're going to do is take any tone we kind of need and we're just going to blend this all in. So on the sides, it's a little bit darker. And I'm just layering all the different tones. So here I'm using the pure natural flesh as this is going to form the kind of shadow side. So I'm working quite roughly, first of all, just blocking in sort of various areas with different values of the flesh. And then eventually I'll start to blend those in. It actually helps having the black at the back here because again, that will keep it desaturated. So if you layer anything over black, it will desaturate it, which is nice to have the white on the kind of main highlight to keep it vibrant. But here in the shadows, it doesn't bother me blocking in over the black. Now at the front here, we start to kind of blend it in. So this tone is kind of the first highlight and it has just a little bit of the pale blue in. So we want to kind of cover most of the head with this color. And then we'll add more of that pale blue like we did in the palette. And that will sort of be closer towards the highlight of the head. You can see I'm always pushing the paint kind of upwards and don't edge highlight those cracks. You want this to be soft because it's a, uh, you know, it's skin, it's not hard armor. So try and keep things a little bit softer. So I'm just gradually layering and adjusting the size of this highlight. I want that shadow on one side of the face, but on the sort of front of the forehead here, we want it to be nice and bright. And as you go through each of the tones on the top, you can pick out the details uh, on the front of the face. The clips are moving around quite quick because unfortunately it kept going out of focus. So I tried to edit this video just using the bits in focus, which isn't as much as I would like, but hopefully uh, you get what you need out of this. So this step, I've got more pale blue added into the mix. And uh, yeah, I'm just layering up gradually and I'm moving towards a highlight there on kind of the corner of the head, the part that's going to catch the most light. Just think of it as a big sphere. So have a look at renders of spheres. And that's kind of what we're aiming for on this head. I'm kind of stippling and using different kinds of brush stroke to blend it in. And that just gives me more control in adding the highlights in the right place. I haven't got much on my brush and I'm just gradually adding little dots and lines in the places where I want it. So it adds a small amount of soft texture and we're detailing the eye as well. You'll get to a point where you've layered up to kind of your top highlight and it might not be very blended. So here I'm using the Gulliman, what's it called? Contrast. And uh, I'm starting to move that into the shadows and that's gonna you know, really tie things together. So basically we're just layering with the acrylics and then we're glazing and washing with the contrast paints. And I find this to be quite simple because we're not using very many products. And yeah, it just works really nicely because you've got the translucent contrast with a lot of tone and then the desaturated but opaque uh, acrylic paints and yeah that combination works nicely you can see me just glazing that corner in as it changes into the shadow but then leaving alone the kind of top highlights that we layered up really it should kind of jump from uh, a big highlight that's got strong light and it will just drop suddenly into the shadow where the shape of the face changes with the skin pretty much done, I start to work on the other details. So we have a green part here, which is going to be the same as the armor tutorial. The only thing to bear in mind is you have this strong triangle shape. And this side here uh, on his right, our left, 
is going to be where all the light is. So actually you only need to really highlight this one side. So I'm kind of doing this strong light source, which means you really only need to focus on one side of the head with the skin and then where the head is kind of uh, flat and facing the shadow, it just needs to be dark. And we're going to do the same thing on this armor. So I'm just adding those highlights to the top here. But on the other side, I'll just give it a little edge highlight, but it will basically just be the kind of dark base coat color of the green. And we finished that with quite a bright intense highlight and that's because it needs to match the intensity of the skin highlight. The way we painted the skin shows as a strong light source so this kind of green armor part nearby needs to match that. So here I am back working on the skin. Sometimes it's good just to take a break and do another part of the model and I'm just back to that Gilliman flesh. I keep wanting to call it a glaze. I mean it is a glaze but it's a contrast paint. So glaze with a contrast paint. And you can see I'm just working on that flat part of the face because as the angle changes it just needs to be darker. But I think that looks really natural as we turn it and I hope you like the colour we've created with the pale blue. The back here is a little dark and it needs a little bit of glazing in and adjusting. So yeah, just take your time to adjust and make sure it all works. You need to let things dry, turn it, and I'm just gradually blending it. But the technique's all the same, it's just use the contrast paint for the tone and blending, and then layer up with the other colors that we made. But I'm super happy with that skin color, which is, yeah, gray, <laughs> basically. But uh, yeah, I'm really happy with it. I hope you like it too. These details on the rest of the head are going to be quite simple. For the pipes, I've chosen to do them black with a sharp, shiny highlight. So I start off with some dark blue grey. And this is going to be a highlight that runs all the way across the top of the tube. So just think about it being a cylinder and having that highlight run all the way across it. I start it quite fat and thick towards the front, and so I'm going to go brighter on that later. And then I get a little bit thinner as it goes to the back end here. Then I skip all the way up to pale blue. So I'm not really doing a transition here. I'm just doing very tight lines as sharp as I can. And now I'm just doing a real bright highlight, again, to draw focus to where our light source is hitting the top of the forehead. So these highlights have got to line up with the highlight on the forehead. And this will create that shiny black look because we're going to jump straight up to quite a bright color with not much transition at all. And I'll do the exact same thing on the vents at the front here. So just do them all in a dark gray and then down the kind of center, I'm just almost dry brushing it with a, a two zero size brush, but I'm just trying to catch those vents and get it to look like a kind of shiny black line. Quite tricky as they're tight, so if you make a mistake, just do a light black wash and you'll get that definition back. All the silver parts get blocked in with some Iron Warriors now. This is the new lead belcher, people. It's all about the Iron Warriors. And again, just like the black, we skip all the way to chrome, which is kind of the brightest silver, and we just do very small, tight highlights, and that just really helps with the neatness and the definition. So. No need to go through lots of silvers, just do it very, very tight with these bright highlights and it will work. And it was at that point I glued the head in and you can actually make adjustments once you've stuck it in because you might not have got the lighting quite right, things like that. So it's nice to paint the head separately so you can really hold it close and get the details right, but be prepared to make some little adjustments as it's in there. But I hope you agree that I think it's turned out really nicely and we've painted this with a very strong light source and I hope you think that's not particularly difficult after you've watched this tutorial. It's all about applying the paint well and in the right place. So we don't need a particularly complex recipe. Uh, this is relatively simple. I think the main thing is we mixed in some pale blue to desaturate the tones and I was surprised how nice this looked myself actually, this might be my go-to desaturated skin kind of method now. 
If you're not sure where highlights should be on faces, then use that zenith or prime spraying in the direction of your light source and just use that to your advantage. So just follow that painting the highlights in the right place. That's pretty much all I did for this. And yes, yeah, starting with the white in the main highlight area was very helpful. But the big discovery for me was how great contrast paints are for getting started. So we didn't really use them as intended to do everything for us, but they were great to kind of, yeah, just get a bit of tone in and I prefer them to normal washes. I guess that's how I used them today, like a normal wash to get in the recesses, but the colors are just way nicer and they just dry and look better. I hope you enjoyed this second part. So I guess you could use this skin tutorial for loads of different things, just any maybe Chaos Space Marine head. Uh, you know, it's a face paint tutorial, so hopefully it's versatile and useful to you. In the third part, then we're just gonna do loads of cool stuff. So I'm really happy with how the gold turned out on the icon, and that's a, a new gold recipe I haven't done on the channel before. And then we're gonna do some textured leather and you know, all that kind of stuff. So I'm really looking forward to finishing this model next week and then getting that tutorial edited up for you guys. So until then, have fun and let me know in the comments what you think of this model so far and how you found this tutorial on skin. So until then, have fun painting and if you're painting Malagust, tag us, we wanna see. See you next time.